Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's video, we're going to be reviewing a 2022 Toyota Tundra 1794 edition with air suspension, so I can finally see what the air suspension drives like. First and foremost, so a huge shout out and thank you to the Brent Brown Toyota here in Orem, Utah, for giving me some time with this truck. It is available for sale for the time being, so if you're interested, I'll include a link to their inventory in the description down below so you can check them out. And then on a side note, if you want to save time and money the next time I purchase a car, link to my car buying guide in the description down below. Let's get into it. So under the hood, we have a twin turbo 3.5 liter V6. It goes through a 10 speed automatic transmission. It is good for 389 horsepower and then 479 pound feet of torque with fuel economy being right under 20 miles per gallon in terms of the average. Now let's go over the front end of the 1794 edition. And I feel like this particular color on the Tundra is like the color for the 2022 Tundra because like, yeah, just a lot of them have it. But anyways, you guys can see here on the hood how it's raised on either side. You got some nice metallic flake in this red paint. And then we've got the LED lights, just a huge signature here of the new Tundra. And then notice the little venting piece down below the lights. Parking sensors integrated here into the front end. And then you got the fog lights here at the bottom. And then this is pretty interesting with these pieces and the grill with the 1794. Notice there's a camera at the bottom of the Toyota logo. And other than that, it's a Tundra and it's got a big grill. Now coming around the side here, our tire and wheel setup is 265, 60, 20 in the front and over in the rear as well. And then you guys can see here from a design perspective with the wheels, you got the stuff on the top, dark metallic gray below that. I think it's a pretty good looking wheel setup overall. Now, just like other Tundras, you've got independent front suspension. And then notice how we've got metallic gray for the fender flare, kind of interesting. Chrome mirror, 1794 edition logo down the side. Notice the chrome on the door handles and then also the window trim as well and yeah let me know what you guys think between like the gray contrast with the chrome trim and all that and we have a solid rear axle but like i said this one has the air suspension in the rear which is kind of hard to see but you guys just gotta trust me that well air suspension in the rear now here's our key fob we have our lock function or unlock function and the opening here for the tailgate payload capacity 1320 towing capacity is right around 10,000 pounds notice that the kick step also pops down with the bed which is pretty neat and this has Toyota's new bed liner which is very abrasive it's probably the best bed liner I've ever seen to be honest and then notice here with the sliders for the cargo tie downs and then you do have LED lights here on the bed and also this is a pretty big bed uh, yeah this is a six and a half foot bed Wow, I think this is the first time I've seen a Tundra with this bed. Anyways, notice with the cargo lights there at the top, well, I should say a crew cab Tundra. Anyways, picking this up, locks into place nicely, and then that goes back into place. Now finishing things up with the rest of the rear, you guys can see here with the taillights. This button right here drops down the tailgate. We have a 4x4 badge Tundra logo, receiver hitch there in the center, and other than that, well, that's the rear. Ooh. Now here's the door panel on the back of the Tundra. You guys can see we've got this sunshade here for the rear passengers. And then I love the two-tone design here with the leather trim. You guys saw we've got power side steps. Look at that wood trim right there. That's also pretty cool. And then here are the seats in the rear. You guys can see here, perforated. Looks fantastic. And also, look at that. we got these cool floor mats. Let's pop in quickly. Got the grab handle right there. Legroom. Headroom. Storage pocket. And then notice here with the cup holders, we have heated and cooled seats here for the rear passengers. We've got our own power outlet. And last but not least, we got some cup holders here in the back. Let's head to the front. Now here's a front door panel. It's identical to the rear with the whole two-tone design and with all of the padding. We do have blind spot monitoring for the mirrors. Here's all of your window controls, and then you've got your mirror adjustments, and then also notice there how you can power fold in the mirrors. Memory seats, and then notice more nice wood trim. And then here's the front seat. Again, you can see perforated all down the center, and then look at this little section right there. And then perforated also on the bottom portion. Padding with the new Tundra seats is very nice. And then you guys can see here with the adjustments on the side. And then notice with the pedal layout, and then you guys can see with the floor mat, 1794 edition. Now we've got a bunch of uh, controls happening here for like the cargo light, for the steps to turn those on or off, heated steering wheel, for the whole outlet situation, auto stop start, collision assistance, so on and so forth. 
Also, steering wheel is power adjustable. Let's pop in. So here is the steering wheel. You guys can see here at the leather trim at the top and at the bottom, it's got like that cowhide texture and then it's perforated here on the side. We do have adaptive cruise control for lean keep assist. And then you guys can see here with the volume voice command controls and yeah, steering wheel setup. Turn signal light stock, windshield wiper stock, and there you go. Now here's the center gauge cluster. As you guys can see, it's a full digital gauge cluster, which is pretty dang cool. And we can scroll through some different menus there on that little side menu, as you guys can see. And we also have some drive modes we can go through. So notice we've got our Sport, Sport Plus, and then our Custom, and then on the other side we have our Normal, Comfort, and Eco. And it lets you know what changes with the different uh, drive modes, which I think is actually pretty cool. And other than that, that's the center. Now here's the infotainment system. First off, if we pop it into reverse, we do have a backup camera with trajectory lines that turn with the steering wheel. We also have that bird's eye view. And as you can see, tons of different camera viewpoints here with the truck full 360 camera system. I really like Toyota's new camera system, frankly. I think they did an excellent job on it. And I'll be excited to see this camera system on other vehicles uh, in the near future. And aside from that, as for the rest of the infotainment system, it's pretty easy to use. You just press the little buttons here for the shortcut uh, bar. And as you can see, response time is solid. The smaller screen you can get with the Tundra has basically the same functionality on it. Do need to mention that. We've got our dual zone climb controls down below. We also have heated and cooled seats, which is pretty cool. And then you guys can see here for the air suspension, you can do that whole setup right there. Hazard lights, stability control. This is for the camera system to pop that whole thing on. And then your little trailer backup system. And then you guys can see here with the parking brake and then also with the auto hold shifter for that 10 speed automatic transmission. It does have the manual shift function. And then ooh, click that wood trim back and well, it's a cup holder. Notice here with the wireless phone charger. And then you guys can see with our drive line select, we do have a two wheel high, four wheel high, and four wheel low. Notice we've got our drive mode select and your tow haul mode. You can just press that to go into tow haul mode. Pretty easy. And then this does slide backwards and forwards to create a little window, but I'm using it as a key holder today. Look at the wood trim there, by the way. Um, but as for the rest of the center console, you guys can see this one has a lock box in it. Still so the USBs right there. And then notice here with the trim on the dash, and also it says 1794 again with the wood trim. And then pretty normal glove box. I do like the interior on this. I think it's actually pretty, pretty cool. We do have a panoramic sunroof here at the top. Controls for the sunroof on either side. And then this does have the camera mirror. Now, if you want the most up-to-date pricing on this particular Tundra because it is pre-owned, then check out Brent Brown's website in the description down below. It's because they had a plate on that car. Anyways, let's see how it drives. Well, let's talk about visibility before we set off. Here's your visibility over the hood. Both of the mirrors, which do a blind spot monitoring. And then throughout the rest of the rear. And let's set off. Okay, so setting off in the 1794 edition. And I picked out this truck because I knew it had air suspension. I did not realize this had a long bed until I was in the middle of the review, which is pretty cool. So I guess this is a double whammy. So I get to see how the air suspension performs and I get to see how the long bed Tundra drives. And when I say long bed, a lot of you will call this a standard box, but in today's, you didn't even look. Are you kidding me? That person just freaking blew out without even looking. Okay, anyways, um, this is a long bed for this type of cab configuration because this cab configuration being the bigger size cab can't go past a six and a half foot uh, bed. And of course as a Prius driver, of course, it's a with a custom license plate too. Not that. <laughs> now, um, getting out the rest of my frustrations. Uh, the seat comfort's really good in the new Tundra. I actually really like these uh, seats. The leather ones just feel really high quality overall. And getting up and moving. I love that turbo torque. You know, obviously, a lot of people have been given this new Tundra engine crap, but. Besides some initial recalls on the engine, it's been 
flawless, uh, frankly. I, I haven't really heard a whole, I heard again a lot of people crying about the recalls, but again, the recalls, they got taken care of. And aside from that, it seems like the engine's been pretty dang good, which I expect that from Toyota because they're all about reliability. Now, in terms of the ride quality with the air suspension, it's really smooth. I don't know if I'd call this smoother than the standard Tundra, because again, the new multi-link setup in the back rides really well. It's nice though. I just don't know if it really improves the ride quality. I'm guessing that this is gonna be more for, you know, the towing side of things where you get a little bit of that functionality of being able to raise and lower the rear and everything. Yeah, I'm not really noticing a difference in the ride quality. I know that took forever for me to kind of, I just, I just had to go over enough bumps, okay? I wanna make sure I say the right thing. Sport S, Sport S Plus. We gotta go to the Sport S Plus because we want the craziest acceleration. So they should firm things up with the suspension. And I will pop into the comfort mode because we were in the normal mode earlier. I'll see if the comfort mode makes any bit of a difference. The ride quality. Definitely can feel the size of this thing. It's a behemoth. That is for sure. Woo! Man, this thing is a monster out of corners. Love that, just that turbo feel. It's fantastic. Now, really responsive in the Sport Plus mode. Okay, we're gonna pop it in comfort now. So this should make, eco, I meant comfort. There we go. This should make the shocks more comfortable. Let's see if it does. Definitely more comfortable in the Sport mode. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I guess it is more comfortable in the comfort mode. It does feel a little bit better. So let's sum things up here with the 1794 edition. First off, it looks like a new Tundra. You either like it or you don't. It seems like people are very polarized on the styling of this truck. I personally like them. Um, my favorite setup, obviously, is crew cab short bed because I feel like that's just the best looking configuration for a truck. Not necessarily the most practical, but it looks the best. Seat comfort's really good. I like the interior on the new Tundra, frankly. It might not look as like modern as, you know, Ram and Ford and all that, but material use throughout is actually pretty nice and it has a durable feel that those two truck makers don't necessarily have with their interiors. If you guys are wondering, that rattling sound is keys on the tray. It's not the truck. The truck doesn't rattle at all. At least this one. Um, and then driving, it's, it's great. Now, in terms of like my opinion on the Tundra lineup, I feel like for luxury, Platinum's the sweet spot, unless you want the more Western themed interior. And then, you know, in terms of like all out, um, well, perfect, there's a, a 2D Pro. I feel like that one's the coolest version of the Tundra, but it's obviously very expensive. Um, but in terms of the best value play of the Tundra, I'd have to say like an SR5 with the TRD off-road package, if you're actually gonna off-road, or a TRD Sport if you're not gonna off-road. And yeah, let me know what you guys think about this with the air suspension and with the longer bed. If you guys were wearing the longer bed, I didn't really notice a difference. The truck feels the same. That's gonna sum things up for our video on this Tundra 1794 edition. Again, a huge shout out thank you to the Brent Brown Toyota in Orem, Utah for giving me some time with this Tundra. Link to their inventory in the description down below. I'll see ya.